Hey what's going on guys, Darius here and welcome to a new tutorial. I'm going to be walking you through in the making of this piece here. Uh, it took about an hour to make so it looks complicated but it's not as complicated as you may think. So um, yeah, let's see how I did uh, various things. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to use the Puppet Warp tool to just uh, move this branch along the jawline of the girl. Um, yeah, let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to hide everything. This is what I started with, okay? So it's just um, a Shutterstock image. Let me just load it up, which has no background. And I imported it into... Uh, an empty layer in Photoshop and the next thing I did is I added the adjustments to it okay so these things here if you saw my previous video on uh, the the girl with the the rain on the mask and everything or even the cosmos photo manipulation you'll know that I just randomly add uh, these effects and you know just uh, tilt them left and right so I can have it fit to the background so this is my background it was white before but everything was done here with just textures you know just like grass textures in the background i had uh, some sort of blurry background you know with the top being light the middle being you know not a bit darker and the bottom being all dark and stuff so if i hide the girl as you can see it's just a bunch of textures that i also used on the mask in um in the background and I just like lower the opacity and whatnot I made the middle green you know with uh, with the brush the soft brush and uh, yeah it's about some some stuff in the background I added these effects right so this thing here which looks cool because it looks like she has a landscape inside of her how did I do this well this is just a simple simple image of a landscape you know of a foggy day landscape if I put on normal as you can see now, it's just like, it's, it's that, okay? Let me put it opacity 100%. See, it's just an image of some uh, landscape. And if I put it on multiply, however, it's going to like wrap around the body. Let me just lower the opacity so it's a bit brighter. I had it at 80 something percent before. So the shadows, um, when you put it on multiply, the shadows from the body of the girl just come out, which is pretty cool. And I thought I'd leave it like that. And it also looks like it's a tattoo or something. I don't, I don't know. It's just cool. I, I just left it. I thought it was very interesting to add to the artwork. Um, also, I, you know, just uh, erased by adding a mask to uh, the girl uh, cut out. And just uh, working around with a black brush. A solid back, back, back <laughs> a solid black brush. I erased to, uh, the top of her head because it was interfering with my mask. And then I added a bunch of more adjustments, uh, gradients and stuff. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Let's just work on the head right now. So the head, right? This is the mask thingy. So it's just a, a composed of a bunch of stocks. So <laughs> if you if you look closely here, you can see the edge of a mask. Let me see if my Photoshop will load. There you go. See? See how uh, it goes into this semicircle? It, it's a mask. I, I wanted to do something techy at first, but then I dragged in a, uh, a stalk of some grass and everything just changed. So let me just hide and unhide things. Uh, if Photoshop, Photoshop is so laggy lately. I don't know. I think it, it might be a problem. I, something, something might be dying in my computer. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, let me just hide all of these. So this is the base of the mask. Okay. Okay. That's not the base of the mask. That's the shadow. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Oh, I am so freaking insanely unorganized with my layers in this one i'm so sorry <laughs> uh so this is just uh the mask and inside of it i added uh this grass stock i think it, it it's, it's just a grass stock i think it's this one here was it yeah so i simply copied this inside and i added a uh, clipping mask and the, some oil filter uh, if, if you look on the original image you're gonna see that uh, it's it's pretty smooth, and this was achieved by using this um, stylized oil paint thing, and 
you know, I just started that one and uh, it made it all clean and stuff. It shouldn't be overused. Uh, it's it's It only looks good on certain things. This thing here is a bush that I had in my stock folder from Shutterstock. I'm guessing it's uh, 3D rendered. And I thought it looked cool behind her. At first, <laughs> I was going to make like an afro or something. But I'm like, oh, wait, wait a minute. That looks cool behind the mask. So I added it uh, behind of the mask and just kind of left it there. Um, and these are some other stocks that I put on light. And I'm just going to show you in a second. Let me see what else we got here. Uh, this thing here that's on lighten right now, I think. Is it? It's on lighten. And it's not all of it. Let me see if I can find it in my stock folder. It's from a cool guy who does this on... Uh, there we go. Found it. This one here. This uh, is it's pretty nicely cut. So I was like, hey, why not use it? So what I did, I dragged it into Photoshop, just like so. And I was like, oh, what mode should I use? Just leave it solid or something? And I was like, nah. I put it on Lighten. And I noticed that uh, it looked pretty cool. It, it, it made it brighter. So I erased, I put it over here, as you can see, and I erased all the parts that I didn't need in the picture and just kept, you know, uh, like if, if, if I move it, you can see that I erased the top left and bottom left side, just like so. So uh, this branch, I'm gonna show you a really cool, uh, really cool trick to move the branch around. Uh, however you want to. So once you have your uh, branch basically selected, select the layer, and it's transparent, right? It doesn't have a background. That's good. Go to Edit and then Puppet Warp. So what Puppet Warp does, it, it allows you to work <laughs> this, uh, this branch as a puppet. So if I add points, this are, these are joints, okay? So I add points to just ground the uh, the other places okay and just move wherever I want to so I'm gonna tell this branch uh, I want you to move around here like so okay also I want you to curve around the bottom like this there we go so this is how I, I made it so that it goes along the jawline and now if I press enter it will apply this motion so see before and after it moved just like that really easy really simple and you can do this with whatever. <laughs> um, I also added this stock on top, which is a blossom. Really nice, really nice stock. Uh, it's from the same guy. It's Al's stock, I think. And I just dragged it inside of Photoshop. And really didn't do much since it was already cool by itself. So I just like rotated it. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's nothing super complicated. Like I just added a bunch of things. And just to put him into the into the picture. Let's go back to the mask for a second, cause so this also has the oil paint effect inside. And uh, oh shit, look, I forgot this hair strand over there. Well, anyway, it doesn't matter. It's gonna bug me now. I'm gonna have to edit the original file. So the mask to do it, I did it with uh, the pen tool as usual. Just watch my last two videos, last two photo manipulation videos. The one with the girl and the the, the rain, and the uh, one with Cosmos, and you can see how I did the mask. So it's just pen tool. I have path selected here on top, and then I, I just right click and then selected the fill path, and then OK, and it's gonna fill it with whatever foreground color you have here. And then I just grab my eraser tool and just er oops, hard brush this one here and just erased whatever parts I didn't need. So yeah, if I wanted to add more shapes, then it's fine. And then I simply put something on top of it, some sort of resource, and then right click and then create clipping mask. And it's only inside of uh, the shape that I just made. So then I just uh, simply added all of these together in the background and in the foreground. There we go. And this one here, the jaw, as I said, if I can find it, is it this one? I think it's this one. No, it's not this one. It's this one here. The jaw, I just used Puppet Warp, you know, to just put it along the jawline. I didn't have to, because it looked cool like this too, but I, I liked it with 
the thing in a jawline uh, better than without it. So, <laughs> so yeah, Jesus. Oh, th there's not much to it. Oh, as for the head, you know, I wanted the same color correction that it, I gave to the girl. So, um, the girl here, I just hold shift, press on the first first adjustment on top, and then click on the last one at the bottom. So I grab this and I copy these on top of the head by holding alt see and it just copies them and it applies this effect to the whole thing uh, to well to the whole piece but if I select them all and then right click and create clipping mask yeah right now right now it's released because it's already clipped it will apply these effects to the uh, head part but I want it to be brighter so if you can see I lowered the opacity from 100% to 58%. I just wanted the piece to be a bit brighter. So this is just a collection of uh, PNG stocks of cutouts. So there's nothing to it. This is why it didn't also take that long. This is oh this is the shadow. So it's just a regular soft brush. Anyway, uh, soft shadows on overlay opacity 100 right now, and uh, yeah, just uh, PNGs. And the adjustments over here, bright things and dark things, make them everything how it should be. I wanted this side to be dark, you know, the left side and the the middle towards the top right side to be lighter. So what I did is I just grabbed the soft brush and this one here, right, with black, and just like went on top of it like this just not as extreme and then I added this I sampled a green from the helmet so if I hold alt the the color picker appears so I can just like click on whatever I want and sample the color so I sampled uh, some dark green I put it on color dodge opacity 29% because 100% was a bit too bright for my taste so 29% seem to be the sweet spot for me so everything is clipped through to the head right so let me just uh, color code this violet so this is all together here can I put it violet there we go and in the end I added a gradient map which is uh, this gradient map here just to make everything a bit more green see and I clip the mask to it. To add a gradient map, really easy, just click here on the bottom and select gradient map. What is this? This is another gradient map. I think it's, no, it's the same one. Just that the dark here is not completely dark. It's 060606 because I wanted this uh, kind of fade effect. I didn't want it to be pitch black. Oh my God, Photoshop is so laggy right now. It's pissing me off. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> so let me show you. If I turn this off, see how it's all dark and stuff, like it's 100% dark? If I add it, then it's normal, like fading. It, it kind of fits into the background. Uh, and then I put it on lighten 100%. Okay, let me just uh, zoom out if, if Photoshop doesn't mess up any day now. And obviously shadows on the girls too, and the same highlights that I did on the mask but this one is on screen opacity 21 percent so it's just around the face that i added a bit you can't really see it like it doesn't really make that much of a difference uh let me see if i missed something i mean we talked about the background which is just a collection of the same png textures on top on low opacity the girl which has the same adjustments as the previous photo manipulation tutorials that i did such as Cosmos and Neo. And uh, yeah, this gradient map is on top, which I just show you, you know, the green one with the, the not 100% dark uh, thingy. <laughs> Shadows on the girl. So this part is dark. Mm, what else we got here? What is this, a sharpen fi Oh no, this is the, uh, the, the thing, the oil filter. The oil filter, uh, oh my God. Apparently, Photoshop lags when I zoom in, so I should probably avoid that. But I need this because it's a big piece. Anyway, see how everything's all neat and all, I don't know. Uh, let me apply the image so I can edit it. Oh, 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 oh. 
guess. Yes, a very important step. Once you've done, once you're completely done with your piece, okay? Well, before the oil paint. Make a new layer on top of everything, okay? On top of everything, go to image and then apply image, okay? And once you do that, your entire image will be on one layer. There we go. Any day now, Photoshop. Okay, so everything is on one layer right now. This is why I have the image on so many layers right here. It's just apply the image a couple of times so I can add various adjustments without messing it up. Um, now go to filter and then stylize and then oil paint. And you don't have to copy my settings because you, you have to tailor them for your piece, okay? Tailor them for your piece. So let me turn on the preview and as you can see, Right now, this is what I used. Stylization 2.5, cleanliness 3.4, scale 2.4, and bristle detail to zero with lining turned off. This fit well, okay? This looks good on this specific piece, if I can move it. Uh, nope, okay, okay. I'll take that Photoshop. If I increase it even more, it's gonna look more comic book weird. This is too clean, okay? This is not... I, I still want some detail. The stylization, just don't overdo it. 2.5 seems to be doing it for this particular piece. If your piece is smaller, like uh, this is this is 2K height, uh, width or something. I don't know. It's, it's, big, it's a big image. Like this is 100% zoomed in, okay? The cleanliness, don't put it too much. I put it at 3.4. Let me just show you at the extreme 10 what it does. It just cleans everything. Everything is kind of washed out. So let's leave it pretty low. The scale, I have no idea what this does. Nothing changes when I change this. I have no idea. What, what do I, I, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> it's just, just leave that. I don't care. <laughs> bristle detail, uh, this makes uh, the bristle a bit sharper, uh, I think. But I don't know, it just didn't do much. So I just turned it off. It, it's not important. Once I press OK, now it applied the effect to the whole image. Oh my God, Photoshop, stop lagging on me. So if I can zoom in on the skin here, you can definitely see the effect. Like you can remove this if you don't like it. If you don't like certain areas, just add a mask to the layer, grab your black brush and just uh, do it over there and just remove it where you don't want it. Like on the lips, I, I would have wanted the lips to be realistic, see? So it can be applied to all of it. Just you can uh, remove it from wherever you want to. Let me just remove this because I already have this effect done on another layer. What is this? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Obviously the camera raw treatment with my personalized settings. Um, the camera raw thing, you can find it in the previous tutorials as well. It's just filter and then camera raw filter, okay? So I just grabbed this image, you know, with the oil effect filter um, and then camera raw filter, right? And this screen pops up, which is normally for photographers you, uh, playing around with images that are in raw format, like the Nikon has neck and I don't know what Canon has. And I just played around with the exposure, the contrast. Let me put it to 100% zoom. There we go. Uh, and, you know, I, I could have added, you know, some HDR effect. That looks kind of cool, actually vibrance uh i could have made it more vibrant you know colors just pop up but i wanted to make it a bit more desaturated i didn't want that much color in it but anyway you can like play around with it you can make it warmer for example or the temperature a bit you know uh cooler added some sharpening obviously i like to add some grain not too much but just a bit of grain and the haze doesn't really matter like this is Mostly if you want more detail to cut. This is mostly for landscapes, so don't worry about it. Vignetting, I think I added just a bit of vignetting. I did. And then I played it with the hue, saturation, and luminance. So I changed the hue of the greens. Like, look, look at the greens here, right? I can, if I move it to the right side, it makes the green look more bluish. If I move it, move it to the left side, it makes it more yellow. So I, 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 don't, I don't know. I think I went towards the blue side the aquas this is the one in the background you know just 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 play around with it really it's it's this is all to fit your particular piece so um this is our perf personal preference there's nothing really 
to say about it. And then I added this gradient map on top when I was done, and it's the same green one to make the blacks uh, not 100% black. Uh, so it's 060606 on the left side with a dark gradient. And uh, let me see what else do I got here. Oh, this is just some uh, some noise. Noise? No, it's not noise. It's a dust, a dust texture that I had in my Shutterstock folder, and I just put it on um, what is it? it? Was this screen mode? I think, and I only left like a bunch, like just uh, a handful. I I can literally count them right now, and I thought it looked cool with the whole. A grungy kind of dust texture kind of thingy so yeah this is really easy like you don't really need to bash your head in to make something like this you just need you know a good idea and just go for it <laughs> so yeah um, if you have any questions then simply ask me in the description and I will answer them obviously so if something is unclear, I could make a video about it or put it in an annotation. And yeah, make sure to subscribe for more tutorials and make sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the description. And if you want to, you can support me on Patreon. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.